Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Terrific Tuesday with Pastor Ken Maxey. That is me. I am Pastor Ken and this is our devotion for December 7th. It is a uh, balmy 30 something degrees. I don't even know if it's 30 degrees yet, uh, but it is a little chilly and uh, we are glad that you're joining us. Uh, I'm jumping on here as well uh, to see who all's jumping on here with me. Uh, I'm not going on a walk today. Hi Val. Good to see you on here. I'm not taking a, a walk today. It's just too cold. Uh, instead, I'm going to be setting out my front par porch. Hi, Mary Rogers. And the bells are on. Welcome, bells. Glad you're here joining us. Hi, Denise. It was good seeing you. It was good seeing your uh, granddaughter get baptized. Uh, that was pretty cool. We had a baptism this uh, Sunday uh, afternoon after church, if, uh, in case some of you missed it. And we had five people get baptized. On Saturday, Saturday, we only had two people signed up. And by Sunday morning, we had five all together. Hi, Dan. Good to see you out there, man. Haven't talked to you in a while. Hope you're doing well. Hope you and uh, Christy are doing well. Um, so I am outside today. And uh, the reason is, is because I had to let my dog in. And uh, she always kind of bothers me whenever I'm doing the devotion. She always wants to be petted or she's kind of in a playful mood this morning. Uh, I don't know how, if, I don't know, I didn't know this about dogs, but uh, apparently they're, sometimes they're morning dogs and there's evening dogs. Ours is not an evening dog. She goes, she lounges around in the evening, but uh, in the morning she is quite awake and wants to play quite a bit. And, uh, I, and I'm trying to get ready for devotion and she's jumping all around me. Hi, Kimmy Jackson. Good morning to you. And hi, Wade. Good morning to you as well. And there's Debbie. And my mom and dad, of course. Hi, mom and dad. Hi, Elaine. All bu bunch of you guys are on here. Hi, Campbells. Yeah, I am. I'm outside. <laughs> I was, I was explaining. Hi, Rogers and Bueller, uh, Rita. Nice to have you guys here. Yeah, it's uh, my dog was bothering me, so I came out here. Hey, by the way, did you ever hear... Did you ever know that Santa Claus had a dog? I never knew this. Santa Claus had a dog, and he named it Santa Paws. <laughs> he named his dog Santa Paws. <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny when I read it. Um, <laughs> good morning, Annie. Welcome. Yeah, it's a it's a bit it's a bit chilly out here, but I've got my jacket on and uh, it feels brisk. It warms you up in the morning. Yeah, I was listening to somebody talk about how they take hot showers. They take a hot shower every morning and then they turn it on full cold for five minutes every morning and it says it invigorates him and it causes the endorphins I don't know I try it for about 10 seconds and I am done <laughs> oh come on Doug that was pretty good it, it, <laughs> that was a good one Santa Paws come on all right how about this one uh, what do uh, gingerbread cookies sleep on what do gingerbread what does the gingerbread man sleep on at night a cookie sheet <laughs> they only get better from here as we get closer to Christmas they only get better <laughs> do you know there's a there in the North Pole there's the alphabet regular alphabet and then there's the Christmas alphabet and the difference is, is that the Christmas alphabet has no L <laughs> all right man we better get going here um, this is Terrific Tuesday, and we are continuing our study in Exodus chapter 17, or uh, chapter 13, and we're looking at verses 17 through 22. Thanks, James. I appreciate that, um, that little laughter. But uh, Exodus 13, um, the Hebrews had just gotten uh, released from uh, the Egyptian bondage, and they're heading out into the wilderness, and so we're going to pick their story up there. But before I do that, I know there are some people that are new here on this devotion, and some people don't know Sarah and I. Some of you probably don't even know who Sarah is. She's kind of a wallflower. She doesn't. Um, she doesn't. Um, she's kind of an introvert. But once you get her talking, uh, she has lots of stories to tell you. But it's just a matter of getting getting her started. But uh, 22 years ago this month. She and I and our little baby Nelson uh, were packing up to move to St. Joseph, Missouri. We used to live in Ligonier, Indiana, which is in the northeast corner of Indiana, uh, not too far from the Michigan-Ohio border. 
and we had moved out there from uh, from Bible College in Iowa. We had moved out to Indiana to do some work and pay off from uh, my student loans. Yeah, imagine that people paying off their student loans instead of asking to get <laughs> get them canceled. But I was working in a in a uh, in a trailer factory as a customer service. I had moved my way up a little bit and uh, was doing pretty well. Uh, we had just had our first baby. Uh, we had just bought our first house, and we were settled in. And her parents, actually, she had two brothers and, and their family living there. They were not originally from Indiana, but they had all moved out there for work. And um, Sarah was uh, working in a factory. She was moving up as an officer manager, actually. They were wanting her to be the head of, an, of, the, of the office, and she was um, 24, 25 years old. She's very talented when it comes to office work. And, uh, and even Sarah's parents had moved out there as well. Uh, they had retired from ministry. They had moved out there, and uh, everything was set up. We were going to have uh, her, our sister-in-law watch our baby a few days of the week, and we were going to have our mo uh, Sarah's mom watch Nelson. And uh, we were making really, really decent money. And I had a new house. Was remod we were remodeled it. And uh, out of nowhere, we get a call from Pastor Daryl Jones saying, Hey, would you consider coming to Grace Evangelical as a youth minister? And uh, you know what? Uh, I had actually went to Bible college with youth ministry and secondary education. And I, at one point, I remember while I was working actually out in the manufacturing plant, I said to myself, I had looked for jobs everywhere. I couldn't find anything. And I remember saying to myself, well, I guess I'll have to wait till uh, Grace Church calls me to come work on their staff. A year and a half later, we get a call. Of course, right when we had everything in place, um, that's when we're called to come uh, move to St. Joseph, Missouri. And uh, to say that it was an easy move, it was a uh, would be an understatement <laughs> or an overstatement, be a dramatic overstatement. Uh, Sarah, uh, oh God bless her, really honestly. I don't mean that to be demeaning. Uh, she placed a lot of faith in, in my prayer with God. And I just I had a sense about our calling out to grace that this was the place that we should go. And uh, it was going to require us to cut our, our entire family income in half. We, we were dropping um, our, all of our income into 50%. We were moving 12 hours away from her family, uh, three hours away from my family, and we only knew a handful of people. We basically knew the Joneses, I knew the Shelatos, and uh, a few other people that I had met at camp. Uh, Sarah didn't really know anybody, and we had a brand new baby, nine weeks old. Uh, but we took a step of faith. We moved, and we moved on Sarah's birthday. Of all days, we had to move on her birthday. It was the hardest thing when her and her parents were saying goodbye, and they were crying. And uh, we were about half an hour into our into our trip, and we started heading west on uh, I-72. And we hit a blizzard that did not stop until we got to Kirksville, Missouri, which was, it took us 14 hours. Usually it would take about uh, nine, ten hours. It took us 14 hours of hard driving. And there were many times I looked up in the rearview mirror, mirror and I saw our little baby in the back and I said to myself, God, is this really what, <laughs> I hope this is really what you want us to do because this is tough. This is tough. And uh, as I was reading Exodus chapter uh, 13, uh, here's the transition. Um, I know the Hebrews, you had to know the Hebrews as they were leaving the comforts of their home. I know they were under bondage, but think about that. This was a home that they had built, their families, generation after generation. Everything that they knew all their life was right there in Goshen under the uh, hands of uh, the Egyptians. And now they were leaving it. And, and at first it was probably pretty exciting that they were being delivered. But you know there came that moment when they were in the wilderness and they were looking around. <laughs> it was dark. I'm sure it was dark. <laughs> and uh, um, they had no home. And they're wondering, Lord, is this really what you're doing? And then it says, it tells us in Exodus 13, um, verses 17 and 18. I, I find this interesting that our the author puts this in there. It says, Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not leave them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. 
So God let the people led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. Now, if you and I were in charge of planning the evacuation route for the Israelites, the Hebrews at that point, we would have taken a more direct route. Think about that. There's a debate whether there were millions of Israelites or there were just hundreds of thousands of Israelites. Uh, it depends on how you interpret a certain Hebrew word. Regardless, there are a lot of people that you have to get from point A to point B. And if it was you and me, we would say, let's take the direct route. But God knew better. Here's the deal. He knew that as he was leading, as he was leading them out, if he took one route, it would encounter a lot of Egyptian military sites, a little headquarters. And the Egyptians at those points probably would have not known what Pharaoh's orders were because they had left with such immediacy. The, the soldiers that were on their post would not have known what was going on, and they would have probably attacked the Israelites, who had no weapons. Think about it. They had no weapons with them. And so God didn't take them that way. And then if, if he took them a different route, there were three different routes. If he took them the other route, it would have entered into the Philistines' territories, and that for sure would have caused a stir because the Philistines um, were very much about defending their territory. And so God led them the route of the Red Sea, which... Again, if you and I were planning this, this we would have definitely not taken them that route because we have no boats. We would have nothing to cross over the Red Sea. Uh, why would anybody go that route? We're gonna find that. We're gonna find out next week why why we why God would go that route. Um, but here's the thing: God foreknew uh, knew what He was doing when He chose that longer way. If you permit the Lord to direct your steps. As Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, many of you guys can quote it uh, by memory. It says, Trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Right? And if we truly believe that, there are going to be times when um, the Lord takes us on these paths that seem very unnecessary and uh, very long and circuitous. My wife likes to tell me that when I drive from point A to point B, I like to take the circuitous, I can't say the word, she says it very well, that I'm, I like to take that kind of route. Um, but we have to remind ourselves that God knows what he's doing. Uh, he's never in a hurry, and as long as you follow him, you're safe, and you're in a place of his blessings. And he may close some doors and suddenly open up others. But we just have to be on alert for when, when God is going to, to make these changes, right? And when he's going to lead us and guide us. Um, like I said, when Sarah and I moved, we gave up a lot of uh, we gave up a lot of income. And we gave up a lot of safety nets. Our family, um, the, the world that we had built, um, the world definitely would have said what we were doing was crazy. But you know that as Christians, what the world considers crazy is uh, we see as God's leading and protection for our life. When we step out on faith, we see it as God uh, leading us and protecting us. And it's tough sometimes. It's very difficult to follow him. Here's the end of the story, as Paul Harvey ought to say, the rest of the story. So in 2007, many of you guys remember, um, uh, well, in 2007, we had just had our fourth child, our fourth son. Jude. He was just a baby. And, um, and towards the end of 2007, things were getting a little shaky. The income, uh, the, the, the uh, nation's economy was getting very shaky. And in 2008, the housing bubble bop popped. Uh, many of you uh, got caught in that. Some of you probably lost some of your retirement during that time. And one of the places that got hit really, really hard during that time was around Ligonier, Indiana, where we had moved from. And in fact, um, the company that I worked for, that I was moving up in, they consolidated with another company. Chances are, I probably would have lost my job or I would have been, I don't know, I probably would have, my income would have gone down. Anyway, and Sarah's work, I don't believe that plant is even there anymore. And uh, everybody moved away from there. Uh, the, it, got, it got hit really, really hard. And who knows if we would have had uh, as been as well off as we are today. And the Lord has really blessed us. We have a, a great church family. You guys are a wonderful support to us. Uh, we have some good friends. Um, we have had a chance to raise our family in one town 
which uh, honestly, Sarah and I can't say that. Um, I got a chance to stay in one area longer than she did, but she was raised in several different towns. And so to be able to raise our sons in, in one church um, for, for their, their growing up years has been wonderful. It's been a blessing. So just kind of wrap this all up. Um, the Hebrews followed God out of Egypt, right? And even though he led them on a path that, that took longer, was more difficult to traverse, in the end it was the right way to go. And just remember, God will always lead his children towards goodness and godliness. That's one thing we got to remember. When we think that God is leading us down a difficult road, he's always leading us towards goodness and godliness with an emphasis on godliness. He wants us to be more like him. And he may have to take us through some rough terrain for sure um, to get there. But in the end, I've always found that it's always definitely worth following him. That's for sure. So I hope that, uh, I hope that speaks to you today. Um, if you guys are, feel like uh, God is leading you down a very difficult road in your life right now, just remember that he's leading you towards goodness and godliness. You just gotta hang in there. Eventually you get there. And, uh, and I encourage you to maybe write some things down or even share it with other people because later on you'll look back and you'll realize God protected you from, from something you could not even see. He protected you from that. So anyway, hope you have a terrific Tuesday. Let's pray and then we'll get going with our day. Lord, thank you so much uh, for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for how it does bring, um, it gives us boundaries. It gives us protection. It gives us insight into how we should live our lives. And Lord, we certainly thank you for that. And Lord, we pray that um, you would be with us this day as we go about our business. And Lord, help us to continue to keep our eyes on you as we as we walk the path that you put before us. Help us to keep our focus on Jesus Christ. And Lord, during this time when it's very busy, there's a lot going on, a lot of things to distract us. I pray that you would um, help us to remain focused on your word and on, on who you are and the real reason for this season. And that's the birth of Jesus Christ. Help us to share with others the salvation that you brought to our lives so that others may know you as their Lord and Savior. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.